Burundi's President General Evariste Daishimiye recently publicly stated that Rwanda is holding captive Burundian refugees and has refused to let them return home, allegations that have been met by surprise on the Rwandan side. It is surprising that Rwanda can be accused of holding Burundian refugees hostage when, for the past few weeks, up to 136 Burundians currently in the country that arrived in different ways, some coming when the borders were still open, others coming here seeking medical services, have now asked to return home but have been refused to do so by the authorities in Burundi. Even officials from their own embassy here in Rwanda have been coordinating with our Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation on ways to get them home. And we have done our part, but Burundi will not take them back. So on one hand, they do not want to take back people who came legally, some even with official permission to come here for medical treatment. And on the other hand, they accuse us of holding their citizens hostage. I believe we should see this for what it is, that it is their perception of Rwanda-Burundi relations. But concerning us holding refugees hostage, that is impossible. We did not tell them to come here, nor do we have anything to gain by keeping those refugees here. Then there is the issue of the recent attack in Rwanda's Nyaruguru district in the southern province that borders Burundi. Extensive investigations repeatedly pointed to the fact that the attackers came from Burundi. So what do authorities have to say about that? Burundi's government responded by saying that they cannot support people bent on destabilizing Rwanda's security, that the information is false, that such things are impossible. That was the answer they gave us. But as you know, this is not the first time such attacks have been carried out, launched from Burundi's territory. And as you pointed out, attackers captured during such operations have explained in court how they received support from Burundi's government in different ways. If Burundi wants good relations with Rwanda, then they must properly address these problems. And if they are bent on trying to destabilize Rwanda's security, then we will continue to foil such attempts and attacks and protect the security and sovereignty of the country. The concerned institutions are more than ready to do it. <laughs> Staying with regional matters, the minister also addressed the issue of the letter from the Office of Uganda's president dated the 4th of this month of August 2020 that calls on Ugandans to refrain from traveling to Rwanda. That letter in Uganda, as we noted, came from that country's leadership addressed to other officials there. Though it was not addressed to us, it spoke of issues that concern Rwanda. Like you said, we have not fully established its authenticity. Yet again, no one has denounced it among those that wrote it. We must therefore look at what is discussed in it, what it seeks to achieve, and how we are to act accordingly. <laughs> The letter also accuses Rwandan soldiers of crossing into Uganda to harass and victimize Ugandan citizens, which Minister Biruta said is completely untrue. Concerning other claims that our soldiers are crossing and going to victimize local residents in Uganda, that is news to us because what we are accustomed to and have seen and have even informed them about is that of some Ugandan soldiers that were crossing into Rwanda and trying to take back Rwandans with them. In fact, they did take one person and only agreed to release him after a local resident paid a ransom, and they did take that money. They tried again and did not succeed that second time, but it happened and we informed them of it. As far as we are concerned, it has never happened that a Rwandan soldier crossed into Uganda even accidentally, only to return right away. The only time we have heard of such things is through such documents that you yourselves are aware of. We therefore believe that it is an attempt to put the problems and blame on us when they know that the problems originate from their own country. Uh, 
Other matters discussed during the press conference included Rwanda's continued fight against COVID-19 and how the country has been working with other countries in the region and around the world to deal with the threat posed by the pandemic.